it is said that a promise made is a debt unpaid. So my dear friends, I am right here for you as I promised that you will get the offline versions of the Hindu editorial analysis once again, but both in English and in Hindi. Okay, my dear friends, so this is the English version. In the comment section, you will find the link of the Hindi version of the Hindu editorial analysis as well. So watch both the sessions so that you are able to get this understanding of the articles in a better way. So as we did in the live session, first of all, what you're going to do is you're going to take a look at some motivational lines over there that's given in the slide. Then we'll have a review of all the important articles that have been printed in today's Hindu editorial. And then, my dear friends, we shall analyze the two of the most important articles that we have in today's Hindu editorial. We'll also learn lots of new vocabulary words. We'll also practice comprehension questions. We'll also play a vocabulary quiz and we'll also learn a lot and have fun a lot at the same time. So let's take a look at the quote that we have here. Can we have the PPT, please? So guys, here's the PPT's first slide for you. It always seems impossible until it's done. Well, these are the golden words of Nelson Mandela. Now, the great Nelson Mandela had actually said that, see, it always seems impossible until it is done. Because a lot of people were telling him, you know what? The English will always maintain supremacy and uh, the various policies which existed in, the, in South Africa, you know, and the various slavery, uh, what do you say, the various slavery, shackles of slavery which were there in South Africa, uh, it, was, it seemed impossible at one point of time that will South Africa ever get its independence from the British and after that from apartheid. So perhaps, you know what, Nelson Mandela had this thought and also, as indomit uh, and also an indomitable will that it always seems impossible until it's done. So my dear friend, if you think, if you have doubts that whether you will be able to clear SBI clerk or not, well, my dear friends, let me just remind you once again, it always seems impossible until it's done. Because I believe that with the ADA 247 video courses, with the career power classes that we have, you'll definitely be able to achieve the same. Now, guys, let's come back to the newspaper that we have, and then let's take a look at all the important articles that we have in this analysis for you. So guys, here is the first uh, article for you. Now see, you can see in the middle over here, the Great American Arms Bazaar. So perhaps you know what? Pakistan used to be a very important market for US, for America, regarding various sales of arms. But now that focus is shifting towards India. Now I'd like to show you the first slide over here that will tell you and give you actually some insight into the arms expenditure of India. Can we have the first slide, please? Okay, so guys, here's a, a view into the insights into, into the various arms expenditure of India. The first point that you can see over here, India spent 55.9 US billion dollars on military expenditure in 2016, that's two years ago. India ranks fifth in the world in terms of military expenditure. USA spent US, uh, you know, approximately you can say 611 billion US dollars on military expenditure, making it number one. So that's there the first point. Then the second point shows about the GDP thing. India's military expenditure is 2.5% of its GDP. India ranks seventh in the world in terms of military expenditure, judging by its this benchmark. Saudi Arabia ranked first, spent 10% of its GDP on military expenditure. Then the third point over is also there, which also shows you what's the rank and what's the position as far as importing of heavy weapons is concerned. Well, India is the world's highest importer of heavy weapons in the world. So perhaps the thing is the 36 Rafale jet deal for which India spent uh, rupees 60,000 crores is also included in this importer business. So perhaps you know that we are not as poor as people think we are. Anyway, the next point over here, the last point over here is India imports 68% of its weapons from Russia, 14% of its weapons from US, and 7.2% from Israel. So these are the major markets from where rather for these are the countries from where we import most of our weaponry. Now let's come back to the article once again, newspaper please. So guys, this uh, these were actually used to give you an insight about the expenditure that India does on its military. Now why did I do that? Because see, I am not going to analyze this particular article, but since it's a very important article, hence you should know the facts and figures so that you are able to understand this article in a better way. So do read this article on your own and understand it on your own. Now, at left you can find over here, time for clarity. 
Now, this is a very, very, very important article. Now, I don't just say that this particular editorial analysis is extremely important for UPSC, for syndicate bank exams, for Canada bank exams, for your uh, various other exams as well, like your SEC exams and CLAT exams and seated exams. I actually mean it, my dear friends, and that is why and that is why we shall definitely take a look at this very important article that's given at left. Now, let's go down further. Well, see, you can find another very important article when it says, in this article when it says it's read like this, capacity building for primary health care. Now, guys, this is regarding the National Medical Commission bill. Now, what are the facts and figures of the National Medical Commission bill? Can I have the next PPD, the next slide, which shows the facts and figures of the National Medical Commission bill? Well, guys, here are the highlights of this particular bill. The first point is Ayurvedic doctors will be able to prescribe allopathic medicines after a bridge course. So basically, basically people, the doctors who are specialized in Ayurvedic and other treatment, you know, they'll be able to prescribe allopathic medicines as well after a bridge course that they'll have to go through. Then the next point over here is the National Medical Commission will have 25 members appointed by the central government. Means the power which will be there, the party which will be there at the center will hold the key in the appointment of the 25 members of the National Medical Commission. Now the third point is NDMC will regulate policy of medical institutions and professionals, will assess human care related requirements and regulate up to 40% fees in private hospitals. So perhaps you know what? You know the various fees that's taken in various kind of hospitals and especially regarding private hospitals. So perhaps 40%, up to 40% of the fees of private hospitals will be regulated by this new NDMC, this new, this new bill by the way, this new council. And then by the way what happens is the NDMC, the National Medical Commission will also take care of the human care requirements that will shall be there at, from time to time. And you know what, it will also regulate and also address and administer the various policies of the medical institutions that's there in our nation and also the medical professionals who practice in our nation. Now, another fourth point over here is given about the same. A medical advisory council will be appointed by the central government for viewing concerns before NMC. So let's just say if any union territory or any state has any particular uh, concern, so for viewing that concern, a medical advisory council shall be appointed by the central government. Now, the last point over here is there will be a uniform national entrance test, you know, for admissions of undergrad medical education in all the medical institutions regulated by the bill. So perhaps a lot of problems have been solved by this National Medical Commission bill, but still there are a few problems which exist and that's why this particular article has been given. Now let's go back to the newspaper once again, please. If you can do that, it'll be really good. So guys, this is the point and that's why this is one article that you must read for sure. So National Capacity Building for Primary Healthcare. So this is a very important article. Now since I want you to analyze your, this article or your own, so I have also given you the facts and figures in the background so that you are able to understand this article in a better way. Now when we take a look at left over here, you can find another political article by the way. Profit and loss. So 20 AAP MLAs from Delhi Vidhan Sabha, they have been disqualified. Now this article covers that entire story regarding from various, uh, having from various points of views. Then the next point over here is a misleading story of job creation. Well, my dear friends, as far as vacancies and job creations are concerned, I am pretty sure that you know the state of reality. But actually, what is the reality that the government is showing and what is the prime reality? We shall be comparing the both of these in our today's analysis of this particular article. Now at right, you can find a Twitter tempest. Now this is a journalistic point of view uh, article, you know. So all those of you who are, pers uh, who are pursuing mass comm, so perhaps this article is actually for you. You can find this really interesting. Now, when we come down further, then another article over here is given at the left. That's the, the, what you said below. Left without consensus. Now this is once again a political article. So all those of you who are aspirants of, who are actually students of political science and who have got some political aspirations. So this is an article for you. So my dear friends, let me repeat once again that this particular analysis is extremely, extremely, extremely important from the point of view of your UPSC examinations, from your bank point of view examinations, whether it's syndicate bank, whether it's uh, you know SBI clerk, whether it's Canada Bank, whether it's CHSL examination, no matter what exam you take, this is an extremely important analysis. Hence, like the video if you like it, and do share, share, and share 
for sure because sharing is what? Caring, exactly. So guys, now let's take a look at the first article that we have over here. I'd rather zoom this for you so that you are able to get better visibility over here. Now, I suppose we can analyze this article, so come back to the newspaper. Okay, so time for clarity. Now, why exactly has this need arisen that we want to uh, get the clarity from our government? Well, we need, we need to understand over here what happened. The center must share details of what has been happening at Doklam. So what exactly happened at Doklam? This needs to be discussed for sure. Now, why is that? See, five months after the government claimed the victory of Kuwait diplomacy to bring the 73-day standoff between India and Chinese troops at Doklam to an end, the contours of the actual agreement and events that followed remain a mystery. So perhaps, you know, you might have a question, so what's the meaning of contours? Contours means the outline, the outline, the summary basically. All right. So perhaps five months, five months after the Indian government claimed that they have had a victory, they have achieved a victory and the victory of quite diplomacy uh, after, you know, which actually ended the 73 day standoff between Indian and Chinese troops at Doklam. So finally this ended, but then again, some need arose because of some Chinese statements and Chinese claims over Doklam and that is why what actually was the agreement which was there which happened in the, during this quiet diplomacy needs to be made public, needs to be made understood to common people as well because we do have a right to understand what's going on. Now, let's understand furthermore. On August 28, the center had issued a statement on a mutual decision for Indian and Chinese troops to disengage and withdraw from the part of the Doklam Plito disputed between China and Bhutan that had been that had been the scene of standoff. So perhaps you know what? On August 28, 28 August, the central government, by the way, issued a statement on mutual decision for Indian and Chinese troops to disengage and go off and go back to their relative, uh, you know, to their uh, relative countries and subjects and positions they, where they were earlier. So which was actually, it actually seemed to be an, it actually seemed to be an end at that very high five standoff which took place between India and China at Doklam Plateau, which is a part of Bhutan. Now this whole scenario, by the way, it's not a problem of India and China. It's a problem of China and Bhutan. But since if this plateau goes away from India, then the Chinese will be very easily able to cut off the Northeast from the Indian mainland. Hence, this particular region of Doklam is also strategically very important from military point of view of Indian military. And that is why there was a standoff between Indian and Chinese military over here, which was supposed to have ended on August 28, after China and India mutually decided and mutually agreed to, uh, you know, take back the troops. Now, then let's understand more over here. Well, see, a second statement from the Ministry of External Affairs the same day said that the verification of point, the verification of the disengagement by both sides from the face point, face off point, which included withdrawal of troops, road construction, equipment, and tents, was almost complete. So perhaps you know another statement came from the MFA, rather M, uh, yeah, in fact, Ministry of uh, External Affairs, by the way. MEA, that's the actual uh, acronym over here. Anyway, so another statement came from the Ministry of External Affairs, which said that see the verification uh, of this uh, of this phase of the end of phase of that is you know withdrawal of troops and removal of road and construction equipment, which happened from the Chinese side, which actually started this whole standoff. They have been done, and also the withdrawal of troop uh, of troop trends, the withdrawal of troops trends have also started. So you know what? This was almost completed. That was what being conveyed by the second statement of the Ministry of External Affairs, which came the same day. But then what happened? Then you know what happened this. See, however, last week, the Army Chief General Bipin Rawat and said, said that the Chinese troops are in parts of Doklam. They had a third o, not manned. And while the People's Liberation in Army Infrastructure Development was temporary in nature, Tents remain, observation posts remain in the disputed area. So ultimately, you know, last week, by the way, Army Chief. So the statement from the military from the Ministry of External Affairs, MEA, came on August 28 that the removal of troops and tents, etc., etc., from both the sides were almost completed. But then last week, January 2018, then last week came another statement from the Army Chief, from the Indian Army Chief General Bipin Rawat, who said that Chinese troops 
which are there in the Doklam Plateau actually are in the areas which are not manned by us, by the Indian troops. And in fact, there is, there are some infrastructure from the Chinese side, from the people of liberation, from the People's Liberation Army, which is Chinese army basically. But still, they're all their posts are temporary in nature. Yes, there are some tents and observation posts also there. But then again, we are also monitoring the situation. So this is the point which was put forward by the Indian Army Chief. Now, guys, at this particular point, I want to show you question number one that we have here for you because we hope that you have understood the situation over here. Now, let's see question number one, please. So now the Indian government, now you have to tell us which of these three statements is not true. Second one is the Indian government claimed the victory of quiet diplomacy to bring 73 day standoff between Indian and Chinese troops. Statement B says on August 21, the center had issued a statement on a mutual decision for Indian and Chinese troops to disengage and withdraw. Statement C says, General B. Rawat said the people's liberation infrastructure, I mean infrastructure, development was temporary in nature. So in the meantime, when you give your answers, let me just inspect these statements. So over here, statement 1 says, statement A says, the Indian government, all right, so perhaps this was a claim by the Indian government uh, that actually claimed the victory of quite diplomacy. And it actually brought the 73 day standoff between Indian and Chinese troops to an end. All right, that's the point over here. Now, do you think this statement, which is given in statement A, is true according to the passage? What do you say about this? Then statement B says, on August 21, focus on the date. On August 21, the center had issued a statement on mutual decision for uh, Indian and Chinese troops to disengage and withdraw. Is this statement true? What do you say according to the passage? Now, statement C says, General Bipin Rabat, all right, so General Bipin Rabat said the People's Liberation Army infrastructure development was temporary in nature. Now, perhaps we are talking about General Bipin Rawat over here, who is the Indian Army Chief. But can you name the Chinese Army Chief, my dear friends? Let's see if you can do that. Well, till now, your time has been completed. And now it's my turn to tell you the correct answer. It's option number two, only B. Because the actual date when the statement was issued from the Ministry of External Affairs of India, the date was August 28, whereas in statement B, it says August 21. So that's why all those of you who marked option number two as the answer, good job, guys. That is the correct answer. Now, let's go back to the, oh, no, no, not let's go back. Let's go forward and see the vocab word question which we have for you. Can we have the next question, please? Okay, so guys, here is the next question for you. So guys, what is the synonym of contour? I had told you the meaning of contour. Now you have to tell me what's the correct synonym of contour from the options which are outline, amorphous, baggy, or indefinite. So guys, you'll have to give an answer in 20 seconds. In the meantime, I shall analyze these options for you. So indefinite, as the name suggests, means something which is not definite, which is absolutely not sure. So perhaps there is not any particular uh, uh, there's no definiteness at all. It's absolutely indefinite. That's the case. Then baggy. Once again, baggy is not, baggy shows key, something which is not in perfect shape. So not in perfect shape, like in the shape of a bag. It's not perfect, all right? The most of the bag, you know, uh, not the school bag, but common bag. It's not perfectly shaped. All right, then the next is what? Then next is amorphous. Means absolutely can change shape. There is not a single definite shape at all. So it can, uh, you know, change various shapes. Then. Well, uh, I'm sure you would have answered till now. The first option, outline, which I had told you is also the meaning of the word contour, is the correct synonym from these options over here. And all those of you who chose option number one, good job, guys. That is the correct answer. Now let's go back to the newspaper once again. So here is the newspaper for you, my dear friends. Now see, the MEA, can we have that please? Thank you. The MEA, which had maintained that there was no change in the status quo, also appeared to shift position, saying that the New Delhi was using established mechanisms to resolve misunderstanding over the Doklam issue. 
while discretion and quiet negotiations are useful, especially when sensitive matters along the India-China line of actual control are being discussed, such divergence in public statements also fuels speculation that something deeper and more troubling exists on the ground. So, on one hand, what the Indian uh, or what the Indian military of external uh, Indian Ministry of External Affairs is saying that see various mechanisms are going on and established mechanism, established diplomatic channel. You know, uh, they are working so that they, there are various disputes which exist along the India China, you know, line of actual control. And perhaps to solve them, it's better to use diplomacy that, that exists. But such statements, such public statements by the Ministry of External Affairs do fuel the fears of an Indo China conflict. And that's not what I am saying over here. It's all recorded over here, it's all written over here. So that is what actually it means. Now, Let's understand more, by the way, my dear friends. See, the government must verify if satellite photographs showing much more permanent infrastructure in northern Doklam, not far from Indian posts that are the subject of reports in the media, are accurate and whether they pose a new threat to India. So, you know, uh, some satellite photographs have been doing rounds uh, at some media channels. So, the government of India needs to verify that whether these photographs are true and whether there is there is the presence of permanent infrastructure in northern Doklam which is not far away from the Indian post because if this is true then they can be a threat so the government first of all needs to verify whether there is an actual threat whether it's an accurate threat or not now let's understand more over here see roiling matters further are the broader statements made in New Delhi last week speaking at MEA's annual rise in a dialogue Foreign Secretary S. Jai Shankar put China's rise on a list of major disruptors in a region. So perhaps you know. So how do you integrate this matter into to take it on another level? Well, this particular point of view, this particular example is absolutely suitable. So see, the thing is that you know what? There was a rise in there was an annual see. This is actually a dialogue of the Ministry of External Affairs. So speaking at the Ministry of External Affairs annual rise in dialogue, the Foreign Secretary of India. S. Jai Shankar put forward the fact that China's first, that China's rise on, you know, first on a list of major disruptors, by the way, in the region. Okay. So perhaps what uh, they want to convey over here that see China is playing the role of, uh, of, major, of a very major disruptor in the region of South Asia. So perhaps they want to show, they want to say that China can be a game, uh, you know, what do you say, not a changer perhaps, but definitely somebody who can spoil the game of the Indian diplomacy. And that's what it has been doing in the region. Okay, so that's what it means over here. Now, let's understand more. So General Rawat, by the way, the Indian Army General, General Rawat, said that the time has come for India to shift its to focus, for India to shift focus from its western border with Pakistan to its northern border with China. Now, this is bound to raise eyebrows given that the boundary with Pakistan has seen heavy shelling and rising military and civilian casualties in the past year. So the Indian Army also made, uh, the Indian Army General also made a statement by the way and definitely raised a lot of eyebrows when he stated that India needs to change its focus from the western borders and needs to focus more on the northern borders with China. Though we have seen heavy shelling from the Pakistani side, various ceasefire violations result in a death of civilian casualties and also the army casualties and various military casualties on the Indian side. Then is there something bigger that's coming from the Chinese side? Is this, this what the Indian Army General want to convey? Now, let's understand more. Similarly, Beijing's latest belligerent statements that all of Doklam belongs to China and is under effective jurisdiction could be indicators that the agreement announced in August is unraveling. If so, a Doklam style troop buildup in the future must be avoided at all costs. It is imperative that the government proceed with caution steps and consistency in statement and drop the ambiguity it has embraced since Doklam standoff began in June. So perhaps, well, uh, China's uh, statement is also not being helping. So perhaps you might want to know, you might want to know what is the meaning of belligerency. Belligerent is more like, you know, something like an enemy. It's, uh, it's uh, you know, more like an enemy, belligerent, uh, you know, something that is related to an enemy or perhaps uh, or a competitor. So the Chinese statements which have been made off late also don't help the fact that there should be peace between India and China because they have uh, recently stated that all of Doklam, 
whether it's anywhere, any place, Northern Doklam, Southern Doklam, Eastern Doklam, Western Doklam, Central Doklam, all of Doklam Plateau belongs to China. So that's what they had conveyed, and this can actually, you know, fuel some uh, diplomatic roles from the Indian and Bhutanese side as well. And by the way, even if it fuels that, they sh India should make sure, the government should make sure that there is, once again, never ever a climb style stoop build up that actually happened in last year. And that's what, and India needs to treat, uh, you know, with precaution when it comes to bringing China to the table. So guys, that was all from this particular article. I hope you found it interesting. If you found this article interesting and also my explanation really nice, so you can like the video. You can tell me in the comment section what more should I further improve and you can also share because show us some love and share the video. It will further encourage us and motivate us in bringing you better analysis. Now guys, let's take a look at the question number two that we have here. Can we have the next question, please? So question number, uh, okay, actually it's three by the way. Now the focus has shifted. So question number three is, which of the following is true according to para? So you have to tell us that which of the following is actually true according to para statement. A is, the government must verify satellite photographs showing a much more permanent infrastructure in northern Doklam. Statement B says, rolling matters further are the broader statements made in New Delhi last month. And that, you know, understand very well at that right in dialogue. Then statement C says, Beijing states that all of Doklam belongs to China. Now what do you say, guys? What, which one of these is true according to Para? In the meantime, you can answer. Well, I'll just, uh, what do you say, summarize these statements or rather just, you know, figure them out for you. Now, statement A says, the government must verify satellite photographs showing much more permanent infrastructure in northern Doklam. So the Indian Army General had said that whatever infrastructure is seen from the Chinese slide on the Doklam Plateau is actually temporary in nature. But there have been some satellite images which actually show much more permanent infrastructure. Uh, by the way, so what do you think, guys? Is this true? Is this statement true according to the passage? Then statement B says, rolling matters further are the broader, st broader statements made in New Delhi last month. So during the Raisina dialogue, some statements were made. But exactly are we talking about that dialogue over here that we need to understand? Now, the next point over here, statement C, is Beijing states that all of Doklam belongs to China. Did Beijing say like this? Is this given in the article? Well, I'm pretty sure, guys, that till now, you would have, uh, you would have, you know, made your, uh, you, you would have, uh, definitely would have been able to figure out what's the correct answer over here. So perhaps this is actually a really nice question, and that's why even I got stuck at would have. So let's hope you have answered correctly. Now, there's only one statement, let me tell you, which is not true, it's statement B. Because the rise in dialogue did not take place last month, it took place last week. That means statement B is wrong, which means, guys, only A and C or C and A given in option number four is the correct answer. And I hope that you have marked that option as the correct answer. Now let's see the next question and the next vocabulary word for you. So what is the antonym for the word belligerent from the options which are aggressive, antagonistic, agreeable, combative? Your time starts now, by the way. I had told you the meaning for belligerent. I hope you can give me the correct answer as well. So when you talk about combative, combative uh, originates from combat, which means to fight. So perhaps somebody who has a structure or who has a sense of fighting should be termed as combative. Somebody who seems to be having the intention of fighting or combating is called combative. Then agreeable. Somebody who agrees, you know, somebody who's gent who, what do you say, most probably, you know, gently agrees or does not want to fight or simply, you know, just uh, submits to the opposition and very easily, you know, just understands and, uh, and agrees to the various points put forward. It can be termed as uh, agreeable or amiable as well. Then next point over here is antagonistic. So somebody who shows enemy-like symptoms or behaves like an enemy or is an enemy, for that person, we can use antagonistic. Then for that entity, rather, we can use antagonistic. And aggressive, once again, the one who shows aggression, who shows aggression can be turned as aggressive, like Virat Kohli shows a lot of aggression. So that's why he can term, be termed as aggressive. But he's more of an aggressive player, aggressive batsman. Now, so belligerent. Now, uh, I had told you the meaning of this word while discussing this article. That means I hope that you shall be able to give the correct answer, the correct antonym for the term belligerent. Now guys, from the various options, the correct answer has to be option number three because all the other options, one, two, and four, are synonym for the term belligerent. 
So guys, I hope that you have been able to give the correct answer and you also enjoyed both of these questions and the article and the words that we discussed. If you are really enjoyed, please like the video, give us your uh, feedback in the comments and share the video with your other friends and family members because sharing is caring, guys. Now, let's come back to the newspaper, please. So here is another very, very, very important article which is here for us and that is a misleading story of job creation. So why exactly is it stated like this? See, India does not create 55 lakh new jobs every year as claimed by a new report. So this is, by the way, the funda over here. And why is this being said like this? Let's understand more. So here's the point, by the way. A recent research report titled Towards a Payroll Reporting in India, authored by the group chief economic advisor of the State Bank of India and a professor from the Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore, has caught the media's and the prime minister's fancy. Ostensibly, the main objective of the report was to make a case for a better payroll reporting system in India which is perfectly justified and needed. So ostensibly, first of all, you might want to know what's the meaning of ostensibly. So basically, primarily or mainly or which can be seen very easily. That can be termed as ostensibly. So perhaps, you know, a new research report is out uh, for us, out for the public. And this report is called a Towards a Payroll uh, Reporting and in India. In India. Well, this particular report has been authored by whom? Has been authored by the group chief economic advisor of the State Bank of India and a professor from the Indian, from the prestigious Indian Institute of Management, that's IIM Bangalore. Now, this has, by the way, caught uh, the fancy of the media and the prime minister, means they are being fancied, they are uh, feeling really amazing at this report. And why is that? See, that we'll understand later. But the point over here is what is the clear main objective of this report was to show, was to make a case that better payroll reporting system in India should be there, which is perfectly justified and needed as per the orders. Now, let's understand more. But, a big but is here, but along the way, it also made an extravagant claim that 55 lakh new jobs are created every year in India. Unsurprisingly, Prime Minister ignored the case for a better payroll system but pounced on the 55 lakh new jobs number, citing it to claim at in an inter interview that his government is doing a new splendid job, a splendid job in creating new jobs. So perhaps you know that the author wants to focus over here that the, that the Prime Minister of India, Mr. Narendra Modi, ignored the fact for the case for a better payroll system but rather Pounds on, in fact, focus. Pounds means to jump, like a tiger pounces. All right. So perhaps, rather, he jumped on the fact that 55 lakh new jobs, are, you know, are created in India every year, without understanding the entire report. This is what we made uh, by over here. Now let's understand more. By the way, unfortunately, well, unfortunately, it is a case of data analysis gone per sec. The celebrations are completely unjustified. So to the authors of this particular article, this whole celebration that the government of India is doing, that they are doing a splendid job and creating 55 lakh new jobs every year is actually not justified. And this is actually a case of data analysis gone berserk or in fact, you know, gone crazy. You can understand about that. Now, let's see what we have for you in the PPT. And I'm pretty sure you know what is that. And that's actually the Royal Rumble, Parajumble that we have here for you. Can we have the Parajumble, please? So guys, here is the Parajumble for you. Statement A is ordered by the economic advisor, by the chief or by a group of, uh, okay, once again, ordered by the group chief economic advisor of the State Bank of India. And statement B says, but along the way, it also made an extravagant claim that 55 lakh new jobs are created every year in India. Statement C says, reporting system in India, which is perfectly justified and needed, Statement D says, has caught the media and the Prime Minister's fancy. Ostensibly, then Statement E says, the main objective of the report was to make a case for better payroll. Then Statement F says, a recent research report titled Towards a Payroll Reporting in India. Then Statement G says, a professor from the Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore. Now, guys, first of all, let me just make you understand. There are three objectives when it comes to a parajumble. First of all, you need to find what is the first statement. 
then you need to find what are the relevant logical pairs which can be formed and then at last you need to align all the logical pairs and find the complete order. So you can pause the video over here and make sure that you find the first statement first then to make sure that you find the logical pairs and then you are and then make sure that you find the correct arrangement i hope you do that well let me show you the correct answer after so see i cannot wait right now because this is an offline show in live show we can wait for you but i hope that you already pause the video and you know you will be able to get the answer let me show you the correct solution of this para jumble as well so here is the correct solution of the para jumble. It's F A G D E C B. Now, see statement F, by the way, that starts this entire statement by saying a recent research report titled Towards a Payroll Reporting in India, which is what statement A adds, authored by the group chief economic advisor of the State Bank of India and, and whom? And a professor, that's added by G, a professor from the Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore, has done what? Has caught the media, that's given in statement D, has caught the media's and the Prime Minister's fancy, okay, ostensibly, what has it done? Ostensibly, the main objective, given in statement E, the main objective of the report was to make a case for a better payroll. Statement C then adds a payroll reporting system in India, which is perfectly justified and needed as well. But then what? But along the way, given in statement B, but along the way, it also made an extravagant claim that 55 lakh new jobs are created every year in India. I hope that you pause the video, found the first statement, found the logical pairs and then got the complete arrangement correct. Well guys, that's how it's done. Now let's move forward. Let's see the next question, please. So guys, you have to tell us what's the correct synonym for the word ostensibly from the options of improbably, evidently, obscurely, unlikely. Now see, I had told you that ostensibly what actually means during the analysis of this particular article. So I hope that you shall be able to answer this question correctly. Now anyway, so, well, let me just analyze these uh, options. In, in the meantime, you can answer as well. See, improbably wise, uh, it actually means, improbably means, you know, uh, something which is not probable, something which is not true, which is not true in any or any of the cases. All right, then statement four says, unlikely, means something which is hardly likely, which is actually, once again, not true, which cannot happen. Then statement three says, obscurely, means uh, cannot be seen, in a way that cannot be seen. It's not visible. Then option number two is evidently, which can be seen clearly, and I am sure it should be evident, it should be ostensible to all of you that you find option number two as the correct answer to the synonym for the word ostensibly, because yes, that is the answer. Now, guys, let's go back to the newspaper and let's see what's more in this article. So here is this article for you once again. Now see, flaws in analysis. Flaws means what? Means the various issues, the loopholes which exist. All right, so flaws in analysis means the loopholes. Analysis, now we're gonna discuss about that. How did the new report, how did the report arrive at 55 lakh new jobs number? That's the question which needs to be asked. It used data from the Employees Provident Fund Organization, which registers employ from the formal sector for provident fund benefits. It found that the, as of November 2017, there was 36.8 lakh new numbers in the age group of 18 to 25 years who registered with the EPFO with the, with the previous year. So perhaps, you know, the base of this 55 lakh new jobs number is actually the data which was provided by the EPFO. Now, according to this particular data, which actually see EPFO registers the various uh, employees with formal from the formal sector for provident fund benefits. And in fact, once you get a government job, and in fact, all those of you who are in government job or in any job, I am sure that you would know about this. Now, it found, so this, uh, the, the, the authors of the report found that as of November 2017, there were 36.8 lakh new numbers in the age group of 18 to 25 years who registered with the EPFO vis-a-vis -vis the previous year, the prior year. Now, let's understand more over here. So see, the point is, it assumed, it assumed that any 18 to 25 year old registering with the EPFO implies that he or she found a new job in the organized sector. Now see, understand the case over here. You can start doing a job before, years before, and you can, and your, when your company feels like, most of the private companies, you know, they are like this only, when the company feels like that you shall get an EPF account as well, 
they can actually make you register because they'll also have to contribute a particular amount, you know. The amount which you give, they'll also have to give that, that, that much amount to this EPF organization. So that is why the company can get you registered years later. All right, so perhaps you can be an employee in any year and the company can register you a years, you know, many years later in the same year or years later as well. That depends on the company. So that's the point. But what happened in this report, you know, they thought that the fact which was given over here, all the new registrations means new jobs. All right, so that is what they thought over here. Now let's understand more. If it then extra related this November 2017 data to the full year of fiscal year 2018 and boldly claimed that 55.2 lakh new jobs were created in fiscal year 2018. So perhaps extrapolated, now the meaning of extrapolated means you know to exaggerate, all right, to increase the number, to exaggerate, all right. So then this report, what did it do? It actually, uh, you know, reported the number of 20, November 2017 data to be uh, the data of full year of the fiscal year 2017-18, and that's how they, for the full year of 2018 fiscal year, and very boldly, you know, without any fear, very boldly it claimed that 55.2 lakh new jobs were created in fiscal year 2018. So that's the truth of this data. I hope you are able to understand what is the actual truth over here. Now let's take a look at question that we have here for you. Can we have the next question, please? So guys, this is a very important question, and I am sure that all of you will be able to get this answer correct because you want a government job and I am sure that you will get that if you be with us at Adult Reverse 7. So what is the theme of the paragraph? What do you say, ladies and gentlemen and children of my age? What is the theme of the paragraph? Well, option number one says, the false data of 55 lakh jobs. Now is the data, is the data of 55 lakh jobs false? Now if it is so, is this the theme of this particular article? Then option number two says, the fictional data of EPFO. Now, is the data provided by the EPFO, the Employee Provident Fund Organization, is their data fictional, means it does not exist in reality, it's just a work of fiction? Then option number three is, the obsolete figure of EPFO. Is the data or is the figure provided by the EPFO actually obsolete and is of no relevant use this time? Is that the theme of this article? Then option four is the truth behind 55 lakh job creation. So perhaps how was the number 55 lakh for job creation, you know, put forward by the government? Is that the theme of the paragraph? All right, what exactly is the reality behind the 55 lakh job creation? Is that the theme of the paragraph? What do you say about this, guys? Well, now option number five says the confusion of job creation, whether there is job creation, whether there is no job creation, so the confusion of job creation, is that the theme of this article? And I am sure, I am sure that all of you, my smart students who are preparing for UPSC, Syndicate Bank, Canada Bank, and SBI clerk and SSC will be able to understand very well that whether it's option number one or option number four, which is the correct answer. Now see. The ones who will get selected will be the ones who will be able to answer this question correctly as well. Option number one says, the false data of 55 lakh jobs. The false data of 55 lakh jobs means the data, the data that is there regarding 55 lakh jobs. Not creation, not creation, 55 lakh job, false data. Then option number four is what? The truth behind 55 lakh job creation. That is, what exactly is the reality behind the 55 lakh, not job, bulky job creation. So I hope guys, you have been able to get the correct answer. It is option number four, the truth behind 55 lakh job creation, my dear friends. Now, let's go forward and let's take a look at question number eight that we have over here. Can we have that please? So guys, I did ask you, in fact, uh, extrapolate. So I did, uh, in fact, I told you what's the correct meaning of extrapolate. Now you have to tell me what is the correct answer or uh, antonym, by the way, for the word extrapolate from the term deduce, doubt, assume, and envision. Your time starts now, people, and you need to answer that. Well, let me just analyze these options for you. So deduce means something 
which is you know which is uh, understood something which can be understood rather so perhaps actually extrapolate is not a much it's not exactly like exaggerate it means you know something which can be uh, what do you say uh, 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 deduced or calculated all right i'm um, calculation based on assumption that's more like the meaning of uh, you know this extrapolate so option number 1 is like deduce only option number 2 is like you know doubt that what exactly is the meaning of extrapolate so that's you know like that anyway the doubt not the exact calculation not assumption not deduction doubt that's option number 2 option number 3 is assume so for have based on assumption that this can be the this can be the thing or that can be the thing based on assumption that's option number 3 option number 4 is envision so based on assumption and reality what's the future vision envision or in fact uh, or in fact uh, to think to have a vision of how something is going to come into reality all right so assumed assumptions and envisions so well guys i am sure that you would have answered you would have killed the correct answer till now by typing that again and again it's option number 2 doubt my dear friends so i hope guys that now we can come back to the main screen thank you so guys i hope that you were able to enjoy this particular editorial analysis we have done something new after a long long time and it will be really good if you can provide us some chocolates in the comment section because it is said you know kuch naya karne se pehle mu meetha karna chahiye so perhaps we did something new and i hope that we also get sweets in return so in return with sweets it will be really nice of you and sweet of you if you are able to like the video if you do like the video because it will also motivate us and encourage us a lot and in the comment section you can also tell us that what further can be improved or how did you feel today and in facts about the video and in your real life as well and you can also share this with the various aspirants who are preparing just like you who are as sweet as you are and that was all from us do find the link of the hindi editorial analysis in the comment section and you will be able to understand this article in a better way i will provide you the pdf of this article as well at a link in the comment section so stay with us because with 247 government job is right in your pocket peace out